Hello everyone and welcome. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Uh, just want to kind of go over the path tracer in Unreal Engine. And as you can see up here, I'm utilizing in the background 4.27.1. Um, here is some results. This is not photoshopped at all. This is straight out of Unreal Engine in this little demo scene I'm about to show you. So I'm just going to show you how I got this um, and kind of what things are about in the in the in engine when using the path tracer it's pretty straightforward if you got a little time on your hands and you're not really worried about render time i think you'll find it very useful to generate at least some nice stills you can do animation as well but um it really depends on your hardware and your graphics card so let me jump right in here let me close this down so here's my scene there's nothing much to it i just set up a room throwed some textures in there and some basic props so to activate path tracing you want to go up to unlit and activate the path tracer and here we go and i'll explain what this bar is here in a minute but really what this really reminds me of is the progress render display in v-ray um you know their quote real-time render engine that's why like for me this became very native because this is kind of how i work in v-ray a lot um when I'm lighting, I really, I really love to have sort of an interactive display while I'm lighting. And you can do that in bake mode. This video is not about baking, but just um, about the path tracer. So let me give you an example of that. So if I click on my sun up here, and if I change the sun, this all changes too. Seems pretty obvious, but th this is this is really, really, really helpful. Um, to me and I think the practical reason why it's built in engine is for artists that are doing real-time scenes that are in lit mode or baked mode or whatever you want to call it this scene is not baked at all so I can't really show that as a demonstration but what it's useful for is if you're baking your lighting um, you would kind of go to a path tracing mode to see the reference right so what is the reference the lighting how should my bake lighting look and the path tracer will give you the most accurate results on what that should look like okay and again this is not big but if i go to path tracer you know i can kind of get some uh info on what my lighting should look like so how do you set this up right okay so i'm actually going to click off here and i'm going to go to post process volume and i'm going to select path or type in path rather and when i type in path i'm going to set these back to default okay and explain these a little bit so bounces in your scene think of that as the number of light rays that are in your scene right so as we know when we render things light comes in light bounces and it kind of fills in blacks and it kind of you know the gi right and it also affects your reflection quality and things of that nature so um what i'm going to do to show you that is i'm going to change it to zero <laughs> and as you can see my entire scene gets black. If I change it to one, I can kind of get some bounces in. The back edges are still black. If I change this to two, I start to get some more light quality here. You start to fill in those blacks. If I change it to three, it gets better and so on and so forth. So it, you know, this, there's no magic bullet as far as like how many bounces you should have in a scene. It really is derived on the scene itself. But for something like this, I mean, really, I don't, keep it any more than I'd say seven bounces that's really it and really it's just enough for me for my old training you know you just want to make sure that nothing is black right so you want to make sure you have enough bounce in your scene enough GI again if that's zero it's completely black if it's one it's still pretty black three seven it gets nice and soft right so that's really what the max bounce is in again think of it as light rays coming in right then this other one is the uh, samples per pixel right samples per pixel is basically the amount of pixels that it's going to render that it's going to kind of bring into reality I mean I don't know what other way to put it but it's it's really your resolution right so if I zoom in here if I have the more pixels I have the more it's going to kind of draw in and give me detail think of it as that so to show that if I change this to 10 I mean look at that I mean not really getting anything right uh, if I change this to 500, it's going to change, take a little bit longer to render, but it's going to give me a little bit better quality. And you can kind of see that in the preview a little bit, okay? So that's really what the pixels per sample. And it, it like if you just are previewing something, I mean, you don't need a lot of samples at all. You just need 
to kind of get an idea. And that's kind of another useful thing about the path tracer is like, if you just need a quick view of like, okay, I want to get a rough idea of my lighting. You don't need a lot of samples. You can even set this thing to one. Well, actually not, don't set it to one. Uh, five, I mean, very fast. So then as I zoom around here and I walk around my scene, I get a really fast result. Again, nothing production quality, nothing that looks like this at this point, but enough information to kind of get an idea on what this should look like, okay? So I'm gonna just gonna pump this back up to two, 250 for right now. All right, so that's what really that does. Think about that as like kind of drawing in your resolution a little bit, okay? So we have the bounces coming in, we have you know, the kind of drawing in the resolution. Filter width is really how sharp. Think of it as like a sharpener um, a little bit in your scene. I personally don't adjust this. Uh, I kind of do all my sharpening and things of that nature in post. Um, so I don't even really use this. Uh, emissive material is if you have a, an, an emissive material in your scene, um, it'll generate light. This scene does not have an emissive material, so we can't really demonstrate that right now, but that's what that's there for, okay? So I'm gonna turn this off. And denoiser is, you know, basically once it's done kind of calculating, do its thing, it'll denoise it, right? Like what you would do in a post-processing software like Photoshop or Adobe After Effects or something of that nature. So as that run, see, as it clicks through, it denoises this. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna unclick it and I'm gonna let it run its, do its thing. And what it's gonna do is not denoise, obviously. And you're gonna see the quality of the image that it, I mean, look, see, it's still really, really pixelated, right? So in order to get a really clean image without using the denoiser, you need to crank this bad boy up, like this thing, and it'll take a while, right? So for stills, kind of a happy balance between this, what I would say, right? So I'm gonna click this back on. I'm gonna click this back to 250. And then I'm gonna show you in the sequencer. So those shots I rendered is a camera that I've animated. And these are the shots. And what I did was I just animated a simple camera, set each one so you can see down here. So my transfer key. So I've keyed each one of these shots. And the reason why I did so is so I can use the movie render queue, okay? So I think for these images here, um, I think I used, I think it was 5,000. So I used a, a 5,000 per pixel, seven balances. I kept this at three and I left my denoise zero. Now, one other thing I wanna go over with is this little bar you see here. Um, this guy right there. Um, you're wondering how do we activate that maybe? I'll show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key, hit the delta key again, and I'm gonna type in R dot path tracing dot progress display. And I'm gonna turn it off. So to turn it off, you hit zero. Okay? Progress display goes away. To activate it, I'm gonna hit the tilde key again, and again it's R dot path tracing dot progress display. And I'm gonna click one, and now it comes back. And as it says, it's just a bar that shows you how long this is gonna to take to render, okay? That's basically all it is. Now, how did I render the sequence? So it's pretty easy. Um, if you go to Window, Cinematic, Movie Render Queue, <clears throat> and I think I already have it loaded in here. I'm gonna delete it, just kind of show you from scratch. So I'm gonna click Render, and then I'm gonna click still shots here and then under still shots i'm going to go to settings and under settings what we need to do is deactivate the deferred rendering so i'm going to delete that and i'm going to go under settings and i'm going to go to path tracer okay path tracer is what we're using to render this so we need to activate that and then i'm going to go to anti-aliasing here now, this is where you kind of need to pay attention a little bit in your render settings. Um, what I like to suggest or kind of say is that this value, you should do a bit of math and that should equal this, right? So what do I mean by that? So basically what you want to do is, let me click the eyedropper off here. Uh, I'm going to do a little math. So 
what I want to do is actually have maybe a uh, spartial sample count of a thousand and then a temporal count of five. So again, the math suggests, you know, five times a thousand equals 5,000, which should equal this, right? And you want to make sure you uncheck override anti-aliasing. Now you could do a different solution, right? So uh, it could be, let's say I'm going to take 5,000 and maybe I have a temporal sample count. Let me divide that by, maybe I want 10. So then it's 10 times, you know, uh, 500. I believe that's what it was. Yeah, uh, 10 times 500, right? And that still equals, you know, still equals 5,000. So that's really, it's kind of important because if you don't get this set up and that equals that, then you don't get the same result, okay? So once that's set up um, and then you kind of defer to whatever your output directory is, you click accept, and then when you render, you're gonna get a screen like this, and you can see here 5,000. So it's your subsample count is 5,000, which equals this. So what that just does is it lines everything up, you know, your render settings, uh, your pixels, uh, your samples per pixel are equal, and you're off to the races. And I think for uh, this, these shots, I don't know. I think I rendered all these shots in maybe an hour. It's really slow. I mean, if you've got some time on, time on your hand, uh, it's useful, but it, it's kind of slow. But I, I love the results. You still get some weird things happening here. Um, if you look at these final images, uh, you still get some of these weird, you know, depth of field. This is what using a depth of field. Um, and I don't know why you get that, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's barely there. I mean, I mean, unless you're really, really looking for it, I guess most people wouldn't see it, but I did notice that I used to use a lot of depth of field in my shots. Uh, something I love doing, playing with the camera. So it's just something I noticed. And again, these images are, uh, unphotoshopped there. There's no post-production done on these whatsoever. These are generated straight out of, um, the path tracer and, you know, again, look, I mean, look at these highlights here. I mean, look at the, um, you see, this isn't pitch black anymore. So we've gotten all the bounces, you know, how it should be, you know, even the blacks in here, um, the crispness of the, of the image. There's a little bit of green bleed here. This is kind of weird because I don't have any green in here. There's some weird color bounces I've noticed in here, um, but Overall, I'm, I'm pretty cool. It's, it's, it's pretty cool um, what you can do. I did run an animation test, so you can run an animation. Uh, I want to show you that here real quick. Um, let me open this up, and then I'm just going to kind of click through here. And as you can see, pretty good. This is really slow, <laughs> really, really slow, but pretty good results. It's a little bit noisy. So what I would suggest, I think for this little animation test, I had the noiser uh, over here unchecked, I believe. It was unchecked. And I just kind of cranked these samples up. I believe it was like 10,000 or something. Um, but it, it, it was it was pretty cool. It, I mean, it was, it did the job. So my suggestion would be you know, rendering out your footage and then maybe going into something in After Effects or Premiere or Final Cut or whatever you're, and you can see it, you see the little bout, the little noise in here. There's a little bit of noise in here. Um, when I kind of pan through the camera a little bit, but if it's not so bad, I mean, you can take this out of post is what I would suggest. But this is using the Path Tracer to generate, um, you know, a quick little, little animation test, um, unbaked lighting, you know, there's no baked lighting in this scene whatsoever. So I think that's kind of a fantastic thing, you know, um, to play with. So anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Uh, it was a really quick kind of demo of the path tracer and yeah, just, just send me a comment if you have any questions. 
Uh, be happy to help in any way I can. And uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. See you in the next one.